Yeah, Dad. It'll be fun. One hour later. The Chucky TV series on the Sci-Fi Channel is the latest addition to the Child's Play universe. And if Cult of Chucky didn't kill this universe, this TV series definitely did. Child's Play was one of the first and one of my favorite horror franchises. First three movies are masterpieces and they begin to go downhill after that. What we're going to do is go over each individual episode and see what they did right and what they did wrong. The episode begins with the scene directly stolen from the seat of Chucky, as we get a first person point of view of a mysterious figure wandering through a house. The figure then approaches a young girl getting ready, looking like Judith Myers from Halloween. In the intro, the best thing in the entire series, with a really catchy tune and a title made up of things relevant to the episode. We then meet up with Chucky for the first time since Colt, as he's sitting at a yard sale waiting to be sold. Here, we're introduced to my biggest problem with this episode, the soundtrack. The first song to be played is Copycat by Billie Eilish, a song completely inappropriate for a horror TV show. We are then introduced to the worst character in the entire show, the main character, Jake. His only personality trait is being gay, and he's kind of a piece of shit, despite what the show says. The actor's performance is also not the best. No matter what the situation is, he's always giving this weird, overdramatic Face. And if you forget he's gay, don't worry. This episode reminds you every 10 minutes. There are more people talking about being gay this episode than Chucky himself. You're then introduced to Jake's father, who's nothing more than a caricature of a drunk, always drinking and screaming. You're having a glass of wine! I'm not having a glass of wine! I'm having six! Jake's father tells him to get ready for his aunt, uncle, and cousin are coming over for dinner. Jake's uncle is played by the same actor who plays his dad. Jake's uncle is well put together and rich, making Jake's dad look like an off-brand version. Jake's cousin Junior is basically the perfect being, having the best grades, and being the best at sports. I haven't had a carb since 2004. Check these. See these? Junior's mom then excuses herself to take a phone call. By what she's saying, the viewers are seemingly led to believe that she's having an affair. You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. We then cut to the next day as Jake is getting on the bus for school, giving another song that's directly on the nose called Personal Hell. That's directly referring to the conflict going on within Jake right now. Then introduced to Junior's girlfriend Lexi, who's nothing more than a one-note stereotype of a rich white girl. Then introduced to Devin, who has a podcast, and Jake is attracted to. Is that a fucking- This guy's pitching a tent! Suddenly, everybody's phones begin to go off as they all receive a message from Lexi. Lexi does her first of many unforgivable pranks. After returning home from school, Jake decides to do some research on his Chucky doll. When he suddenly receives a weird phone call. Hello? What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> the calls from Andy Barkley, who seemingly escaped after his dumbass got himself caught in the mental war. Andy subtly tells him to be careful around the doll and tells him to check the doll for batteries. I'm Chucky, wanna play? Jake then brings Chucky to the school talent show. Quickly see Devin's mom in the audience, who we later find out is one of the only cops in the town. Lexi then exposes and makes fun of Jake for liking Devin in front of a room of teachers and parents who do nothing but laugh. In order to get back at Lexi, Chucky begins to roast her, with everyone believing Jake's the one doing it. Jake then returns home to his dad, who's once again drinking. Two begin to fight as Jake was suspended for school for what happened at the talent show, given the worst kill in the entire Child's Play franchise, as Chucky throws up and electrocutes Jake's dad. <laughs> After his father dies and the police arrive, he's moved to his aunt and uncle's house. He begins to interrogate Chucky. Talk to me. Talk to me. I said talk to me, damn it. I said talk to me, damn it! Chucky reveals that he was alive the entire time, and the episode ends where it began with a flashback to Chucky as a kid. Overall, this first episode was pretty horrible with a bunch of one-note characters, music that's completely out of place, and too much focus on being gay than being scary. After watching the disastrous premiere of this show, I was very reluctant to keep on watching. But upon watching the second episode, I actually found things I like about it. The episode begins just like the last one with a flashback to Charles Lee Ray, as we see him on Halloween night sorting through his candy. We can see that even as a child, Charles Lee Ray was fucked in the head, as he purposely eats candies with razors in them. We then cut to current day, which is also Halloween, as Jake's uncle is driving him and his cousin to school. We can see that Jake's uncle is kind of a hard ass on Junior. Remind me, what's your protein intake this week? Three or four times, maybe. Ooh. I gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. Once they arrive at school, Lexi is once again a bitch, showing absolutely no sympathy to someone who just lost their father. They should have suspended his Walmart ass. Walmart! Walmart! Back at the house, we watch as Chucky tries to stalk and kill the house cleaner. I clean toilet. Chucky ends up killing her by pushing her onto a bunch of knives in the dishwasher. Jake and Junior return home, bullshitting for 20 minutes before even noticing her body. Jake discovers the body and- Oh no, I'm stuck. Step brother, can you help me? Instead of calmly explaining what's going on, he decides to make weird faces and scream, leaving Junior confused on what's going on. Oh, no. Call 911. What are you doing? 
Call 911! Here, Chucky continues his manipulation of trying to get Jake to kill someone by trying to relate to him on a personal level by talking about his gay son. You know, I have a queer kid. Glenda? No, Dad! It's me! Your boy! You have a kid. Gender fluid. Glenn? Guess again, Daddy. Glenda? After the police inform his aunt and uncle they're growing suspicious of Jake, the two of them have a talk right out of Child's Play 2. I mean, are we even qualified to look after a boy like this? Are we even qualified to take care of a boy like this? We then cut to Lexi as we get some insight on what her home life is like. With both parents being very busy as her mom is the mayor and her dad is a recast of the doctor from Colt. Her parents inform her she can't go to her party tonight because she needs to take her sister trick or treat. Junior trying to make his overbearing father proud by dressing as him for Halloween. Right after Junior leaves, Jake comes storming out of the room looking for Chucky. Where is he? Where is he? Uh, did Junior take him? Someone knows where he is. What are you talking about? Chucky. Gone. We then cut to Chucky, who's walking around trick-or-treating, wearing a Hello Kitty mask. Yum, 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 yum. After arriving at the Halloween party, Chucky plays a video game with Lexi's sister. Good this, Chucky. Here, Chucky tries to get the location of Lexi while also trying to convince her sister to kill people. So I always say, it's good, clean fun for the whole family. You can the housekeeper, you can the babysitter, you can even your sister. Chucky then sneaks into a room with Lexi and Junior as he tries to stab them from underneath the bed. While Chucky continues to miss, so does Junior, as Junior can't get it up for his first time. Jake finally arrives at the party when he finds Lexi dressed as his dad, making fun of the way he does. Asshole. This is another unforgivable and ruthless prank by Lexi. The episode ends with Chucky trying to convince Jake to kill Lexi. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. The episode ends with Jake seemingly turning into American Psycho. The Chucky TV series, season 1, episode 3, I Like to Be Hugged, takes place exactly where the last one left off, with Chucky trying to convince Jake to kill Lexi. And I dare you! I double dare you, motherfuckers! Looking for advice, Jake asks Chucky about the first time he killed someone. We then flash back to Chucky's birthday party as a kid. This scene is another example of how even at a young age, Charles Lee Ray was fucked in the head. He seemingly hates all his party guests and beats the shit out of his pinata. Okay, now! The all the parents at the party gather around the radio when news of local murders break. We then cut to Jake in current day as Devin tries to hit on him. Never mind. No, it's stupid. No. Tell me. I wish I could, like, do you or something. We then watch Jake as he tracks down Lexi trying to kill her. At the last minute, it's revealed to be Junior, who for some reason is wearing the same exact outfit as Lexi. We then cut to Lexi's house as her sister is having a meltdown. <laughs> With Lexi promising to get her Chucky to calm her down. Oh, do you want a hug from your big sister? <laughs> Ow! After failing to kill Lexi the first time, Jake goes to the garage to pick out a new weapon. Custom bolt carrier release and charging handle. Flared Magwell for easier reloads. AR-15. When Lexi shows up asking for the doll, giving Jake a second chance to kill her. Jake fails to kill her and refuses to give her the doll. After Jake completely gives up, Chucky agrees to kill Lexi for him. Fine. I'll do it myself. Jake gives the doll to Lexi's little sister. He's so fussy, I'm gonna die! Chucky says he wants to watch the news. Chucky wants to watch the 9 o'clock news. After failing to kill her, Chucky waits for later that night. We get to see Lexi's softer side as she sings to her sister. Bedtime, you have to sing to me. Close your eyes, shut your mouth. After leaving the room, Chucky gets up to try killing Lexi once again. Hey kid, I'm gonna go sister. Chucky jumps out and stabs who he thinks is Lexi, but turns out to be some random kid from a party Lexi's throwing. Uh, fuck it. No. Fuck it. <laughs> Lexi goes off to smoke a joint by herself when she notices something suspicious. You're behind the couch. What? How do you know that? I can, um, see your feet. Ah. Chucky sneaks up and strangles her from behind, making her drop her joint, causing the entire house to go on fire. Oh, that's hot. That's how Chucky finally corners Lexi about to kill her when his big woodliner gets censored. You fucking woman. Fire keeps spreading through the house and because everyone's wearing headphones, no one can seem to feel or see it. We watch as young Charles Lee Ray and his mom take cover in a closet after his father is murdered. When the murderer comes to kill them, it turns out Charles Lee Ray already killed his own mom. The Chucky TV series season 1 episode 4, Just Let Go, picks up with the fire department responding to the fire at Lexi's party.
We then cut to the hospital so we get to see how the fire affected each one of our characters. Junior has lung damage from the smoke and is unable to compete in cross country. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm so tired. Everything hurts. Running is impossible. Devin is completely fine, but just a little shooken up. Boy, that escalated quickly. That really got out of hand fast. And Lexi's little sister is passed out on a ventilator. Bedtime. You have to sing to me. Lexi confronts Jake about Chucky being alive and trying to kill her, to which Jake admits he knows. Who's gonna believe you? It's just us. You believe me now? Yeah. But who's gonna believe me? Lexi gets mad at Jake and blames him for all the murders at the party. We then watch as Lexi's parents yell at her for throwing a party, putting her sister in the hospital, and burning down the house. As the ringleader, you are also grounded for a month. Mom, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I know you won't. We then cut to Junior's parents in the waiting room as Junior's dad turns his anger on Lexi's parents, making a big fight break out. You know, to be considered a stay-at-home dad, you gotta actually parent. <laughs> The fight is broken up by Devin's mom, who warns everybody about the murder at the party. We then cut to Junior and his dad, as Junior's dad forces Junior to say he loves cross country, so he doesn't feel like an overbearing parent. Junior, you like cross country, right? I love lamp. You really love the lamp, or are you just saying it? I love lamp! Getting ready to go into surgery, Junior is drugged and gets all loopy. While going under, Junior sees another Chucky doll, giving a hint of multiple Chucky dolls from the cult of Chucky. We then cut to Charles Lee Ray in a boy's home. Charles Lee Ray leads the boys into the woods to find the murdered body of the janitor. All the kids run away except for one. This kid's revealed to be Eddie Caputo from the first movie. Eddie Caputo. See Eddie Caputo. Authorities say that Caputo managed to threaten to kill me and Eddie Caputo. Partners with uh, Eddie Caputo. Before running away, Charles Lee Ray leaves a present for Eddie Caputo. We then cut back to the hospital where Jake and Lexi agree to team up to take out Chucky. The two of them go to what's left of Lexi's house. Lexi and Jake begin to fight over Jake trying to kill Lexi. I wanted you to die. I said you fucking deserved it. Police, get what you fucking deserve. Lexi ends up falling off the banister with Jake catching her. When all of a sudden, Chucky creeps out of the shadows. They think I'm hiding in the shadows. Chucky tries to convince Jake to let go and let Lexi fall to her death, to which he refuses, but it makes no difference anyway because she's about two feet off the ground and would break an ankle at worst. After pulling Lexi up to safety, a cop barges and brings Chucky to the hospital for Lexi's little sister. Ugly doll. Fuck you. Once the cop arrives at the hospital with Chucky, it's everything in Lexi's little sister's hospital room. After watching this asshole eat for a good five minutes, Chucky stabs him with a scalpel. Ah! Chucky then grabs a handful of needles and pokes him to death. Let's get home. Cut to Devin doing research on Charles Lee Ray. Devin finds Lexi and tells her the legend of the killer good guy doll, to which Lexi admits is all real. It's not a legend. It's true. Force. A Jedi. All of it. We then get a long scene of Devin's mom interrogating Jake. Jake barely says anything the entire interview. <laughs> Today, Junior! Does nothing but make weird faces. And what about your f Yeah. I couldn't stand your fucking face. The episode ends with Chucky unplugging the ventilator of Lexi's little sister and the discovery of the dead cop. I'm so fucking high right now. With Chucky sitting in the background of the chaos flicking off our main characters. Uh, assholes. Hi, soldier. The Chucky TV series season 1 episode 5, Little Little Lies, picks up with Fiona Dorf playing a young Charles Lee Ray at a club. We watch Charles Lee Ray approach a girl after watching her bite another guy's lip. Then cut back to current day as Lexi's sister wakes up from her coma. After seeing the face of her Chucky doll, Lexi's sister has a meltdown. Lexi's dad quickly throws him down the garbage chute. <laughs> Jake and Devin then come down to the garbage room to take care of Chucky. Jake mercilessly stabs the garbage over and over with a broom handle. After slipping off it in a fit of rage, Jake is saved by Devin. Save our lives! We are eternally grateful! We then cut to the kids in class. While the teacher's out of the room, the kids quickly come together to discuss how they're going to take out Chucky. When Junior tries to join the conversation. Talking about... Nothing. Fuck me, right? We then get a scene of Jake and Devin in the hallway as they take their relationship to the next level. Holding hands in front of everyone as we get a time lapse. We then cut to Lexi and her family moving into what's left of their home. Hi, I'm Tommy. Hi, I'm Tommy. Shut up, you idiot. We then cut to burnt face Chucky spying on Lexi's little sister and her new Tommy doll. It was too late. She replaced us. After finding the burnt doll again, Lexi's dad takes it and throws it out. 
Lexi, Devin, and Jake then all meet up to take out the doll in the garbage. After destroying the doll and thinking they killed Chucky, the crew goes out to celebrate. Jake and Devin seal their relationship with a kiss. <laughs> Gay! We then pick back up with the young Charles Lee Ray looking for another girl for a threesome. The redhead was actually Tiffany all along. We then cut to Jennifer Tilly possessed by Tiffany and Nika possessed by Chucky. So we get to see them for the first time since called to Chucky. My mother always told me. You know what my mother used to say? I need a snack. Swedish meatballs. Nobody makes Swedish meatballs like you, babe. We then find out for some reason every time Chucky touches blood, he turns back into Nika. Nika asks for help and unties the guy they have captive, to which he punches her in the face thinking she's crazy since she was the one that tied him up. This causes Charles Lee Ray to come back and control him. We then cut to Junior's mom in therapy. This therapy is a jerk off. As we get the reveal of what her secret was this entire season. Your illness? I have cancer. It's bad. We then cut to the school as we see the principal greeting the town. The principal is then introduced to come out and speak, when all of a sudden her head comes rolling out from backstage. Fake head effect looks really good, just a little uncanny, looking like a Bergen from Trolls. Chucky then pulls back the curtains to reveal the principal laid out like a body from Hannibal. The episode ends with the bird Chucky re-entering the house and transferring into the Tommy doll. The Chucky TV series season 1 episode 6, Cape Queer, picks up with Andy and Kyle after the events of Colt. We watch as Andy and Kyle go from house to house disguised as bureau agents, trying to track down the remaining Chucky dolls from Colt. Can I help you? We're here to fuck shit up. Both characters are a major improvement from the previous film, with Kyle getting a lot more screen time and Andy coming off less like a dumbass. After questioning a family on their daughter's toys, the daughter reveals she has the burnt finger Chucky. Before Chucky can kill the kid, Andy and Kyle pull out their guns, killing him Pulp Fiction style. Fuck you, Andy! After the opening credit scene, we pick up with Andy and Kyle later that day in a car. Here, the creators catch up, show viewers on what happened in the previous films by dropping a whole bunch of member berries on us. Besides, you and me went through a lot as kids. Here, they attempt to show the mental toll Chucky has taken on Andy all these years, with Alex Vincent not giving the best performance. The screams are my favorite. We fucking get a little creepier, dude. But even louder than my own. Can you tone it down, please, a little bit? We then come back to Tiffany and Nika. So far in this first season, and especially in this scene, Jennifer Tilly plays the character of Tiffany very hokey. As best as I can. In season 2, I hope we get a more toned down version of Tiffany, getting more of the darker bride feel than can't be seen. After arguing with Chucky, Tiffany chops off the body's hand, spraying onto Chucky, making him turn back to Nika. We then continue our flashbacks to young Charles Lee Ray as we get to see him and Tiffany buying their first car together. The car they're trying to buy is a reference to Christine being the same make and model. Here we get the origins of one of the most iconic Chucky lines. A true classic never goes out of style. True classic never goes out of style. And at this point in the flashbacks, I'm really uninterested in what's going on. I don't think it really adds anything to the story overall, and it's just useless details. The flashback ends with the final easter egg of Charles Lee Ray reading Voodoo for Dummies, a book mentioned multiple times throughout the series. Suspicious of Nika, Tiffany begins to ask her questions only Chucky would know, bringing up a reference to their honeymoon in The Bride of Chucky. After found to answer, Jennifer Tilly admits she knows it's Nika because she stabbed her in the leg two minutes ago. I stabbed you in the thigh ten minutes ago. Don't you stick that knife in your leg. Ah! Tiffany admits to liking Nika more than Chucky, and in an attempt to keep Nika in the body, she knocks her out. Jake and Devin call up Andy, being the first time Jake has spoken to Andy since the first episode. Andy Barkley? Jake Wheeler. Do you miss me, Andy? I sure missed you. Andy warns the boys to be careful, and the boys beg for Andy's help. We then see Junior's mom on her way to therapy as she leaves Junior in the car. After a short therapy session where she decides to get no cancer treatment, we're given the most brutal death in the entire series. Though it doesn't make the most sense, Chucky pushes a mail cart into Junior's mom, causing her to go flying out the window. <laughs> This was a really cool death, but overall, I feel like they wasted the potential they had with Junior's mom. While mourning the death of his mother, Jake comes over to comfort Junior, to which Junior snaps, blaming Jake for everything that's happened. We were fine before you came along. All of this, falling apart like this, is on you. We then cut to Devin in his room as he's watching the movie Cape Fear, the movie in which the title of this episode is a parody of. We then get recreations from the movie that our group puts together booby traps for Chucky. The doll begins to move in their good guy footprints by the fireplace. Got any idea what these are? Small footprints. Chucky's able to trap Lexi upstairs when Devin and Jake come to the rescue, knocking Chucky on his ass, giving us a reference to Lethal Weapon. I'm too old for this shit. I'm too old for this shit. 
Devin's mom comes to the house following up a lead. After popping out of the ventilation shaft, Devin's mom falls down the stairs and breaks her neck. <laughs> With dramatic music playing in the background, we get to zoom in on each one of our characters making a dramatic face. The death of Devin's mom is something I'm really iffy on because at this point we lost a lot of the parents. She was the only cop in the entire town and the death itself wasn't really that great. The Chucky TV series season 1 episode 7, Twice the Grieving, Double the Loss, is overall a really good episode, setting us up greatly for the final episode of the first season. The episode begins with our characters mourning the death of Junior and Devin's moms. Junior is visibly upset and lashes out at Jake, blaming him for everything that's happened so far. My mother is dead. And everything is worse now. While Junior's dad is breaking up the situation, Jennifer Tilly pulls up in a red car, giving way to one of the dumbest scenes in this entire show, making Chucky's plan look really stupid in hindsight. As Jennifer Tilly walks over to Junior's dad and kisses him on the lips in front of Junior, in an attempt to make Junior think his dad was cheating, and that caused his mom to want to commit suicide. This is stupid for a lot of reasons, which we'll go over later, but as of right now, why is his dad not pushing the strange lady off of him and asking what's going on and what is she doing, instead of just standing there like a mindless idiot letting her do whatever she wants? He's just standing. We then get a really cool opening title sequence that's really fitting for the episode, with gravestones of the characters we lost so far this season. We then pick back up with Andy and Kyle as they stop at a gas station. These things are gonna kill you. <laughs> Seriously? You worried about this? Oh, this. These things are very bad for you. And then suddenly, with no setup whatsoever, Andy decides to leave Kyle behind for her own safety, locking her out of the car and driving away. It's locked, open it up. Ha ha, very funny, open the door. Open the fucking door! Now open the goddamn door! We then pick back up with Junior's dad drinking in front of the fire, slowly becoming his brother. Here once again, Junior's dad is absolutely brain dead for the sake of the script, as Junior confronts his dad about what happened with Jennifer Tilly, and instead of answering him like a normal person, and saying he didn't know who that was and why she did that, he completely ignores him and stupidly just continues continues to stare into the fire. Dad, who is that woman? What? This whole point makes no sense and could have absolutely been avoided if he just opened his mouth. We then get another useless flashback of Charles Lee Ray and Tiffany buying a house. And at this point, these flashbacks are really useless, just being a checklist of them doing their first things as a couple. Buying their first car, buying their first house. The flashback ends with Tiffany getting pissed off at Charles for killing someone else without her. Tiffany then goes back to Junior's house later that night with a plate of Swedish meatballs. Hey! I fucked your dad. You didn't see anything. Devin is packing up his stuff and reminiscing through his mom's things when he comes across a piece of paper with Charles Lee Ray's house on it. He then decides to go investigate when he finds Nika tied up. Devin frees her and just as he does that, he's betrayed as she turns back into Charles Lee Ray, giving us the only time I think Fiona Dorf does an actual good job pretending to be Chucky. <laughs> We then see Jake at the bus stop as he seemingly decided to leave town. But by some sure act of coincidence while waiting for the bus, some guy happens to walk by with a good guy doll. After hunting him down and offering money for the doll, I'll pay you. Tampering with the mail is a federal offense. He agrees to give it to him, telling him he was bringing it to Charles Lee Ray's old house. After buying the doll, Jake checks to see if it's alive. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. I said talk to me, damn it! Jake returns home to warn Lexi and Devin, as he admits to Lexi that he is about to run away. She then begins to berate Jake for leaving his family, meaning her and Devin. Leaving your family behind? Like you don't turn your back on family. Even though she's the biggest asshole to him up until like two episodes ago, and I still don't buy the fact that they would become friends after everything she's done to him. Jake and Lexi then find out that Devin went to Charles Lee Ray's house alone. Junior then goes upstairs to find Chucky, who's further trying to convince him his father cheated on his mother. Junior's dead, entering his room drunk, attempting to talk to his son. Junior then, in a fit of anger, t beats his dad to death with the Chucky doll, giving way to some really cool camera angles of Chucky getting swung back and forth, completing the first part of Chucky's plan, bringing an army of good guy dolls to life. Chucky celebrates by dancing. What? What is a classic? The final shot of the episode is Chucky and Junior looking out the window as Andy arrives, getting ready for the final showdown. The real fun can start. This is where the fun begins. The Chucky TV series season 1 episode 8 and Affair to Dismember is the last episode of the first season, a very disappointing ending for a lackluster season. The episode begins right where the last one left off, with Andy approaching Junior's house. Junior lets him in and he begins to search the house, looking for proof of Chucky or dead bodies. Hey little D, I know you're in here somewhere. Andy leaves the house having no evidence of Chucky as Chucky pops out of the toilet, looking like a scene from Ghoulies. Like the guy's got serious issues. <laughs> Ghoulies. After Junior questions Chucky on why he didn't just kill Andy, Chucky tells him about all the different ways he's been killed in the past. I hate guns. They're like my Achilles heel. <laughs> Along with 
axes. And those big industrial size fans. We then pick back up with Lexi and Jake as they're making plans to rescue Devin when they're interrupted by a Chucky doll, giving us a reference to The Shining. Here's Chucky! Here's Johnny! Before the doll's able to attack, they're saved by Kyle. And at this point, I have no idea how Andy or Kyle know where to go or how Kyle even got here so quickly. After being left behind by Andy, Kyle catches the kids up on everything that's been going on but coming off as a cringe boomer, trying to relate to young kids. I know. Whack. <laughs> Fucking voodoo, man. Being a responsible adult, Kyle does the smartest thing possible and decides to drug the two kids. So they'll be asleep, leaving them helpless and defenseless if Chucky decides to show up. We then cut to Chucky giving a speech to his army of good guy dolls. Any questions? Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, mayonnaise is not an instrument. In the cult of Chucky, I really wasn't a fan of the multiple doll thing. And I'm still not the biggest fan here, but I think they do a better job of presenting the concept. We then continue the inconsistencies with Tiffany's character. As multiple times throughout the season, Tiffany has flip-flopped from being on Chucky's side to being against him. Even after killing him and declaring she wants nothing to do with him, she continues to follow his plan later in the episode. We are then given our final flashback of the season, and this is definitely our shortest flashback of them all, showing they really didn't have the material to keep making these flashbacks and kept coming up with shit as they were going along. Just so they can get to this point, we're given the reveal that Tiffany was the one that called Mike on the day that Charles Lee Ray was gunned down. Devin is tied up alone in the house when the headless body body of Chucky stands up and moves on its own. Before it can attack Devin, he's saved by Andy, coming through the window. Earlier, it was established that the front door is booby-trapped to explode. While Andy's untying Devin, Kyle walks through the front door, setting off the explosion, hinting at the fact that Kyle may or may not have died. And I think it would be really stupid to bring her back just to kill her off like that. Jake and Lexi wake up after being drugged and find an article stating there's been an explosion at Charles Lee Ray's old house, and fatalities were reported. Knowing Devin was at the house, they figured he was killed in the explosion. Jake goes to Devin's house to cry when it's revealed that Devin's still alive. Now that we know that Devin's still alive, that means either Andy or Kyle had to die in that fire. But we see later on in the episode that Andy's still alive, and it's hinted at in the final scene that Kyle's still alive as well. So is the headline just wrong, or whose body are they referring to? We then cut over to the movie theater, where Lexi's mom is holding a town movie night, in order to redirect the town's attention from all the murders that have been going on. Jennifer Tilly's revealed to be a surprise guest. She's there to continue Chucky's plan, even though everything had happened with Chucky. Here we get a full understanding of what Chucky's plan really was. He manipulated one of the kids in town to bring his army of good guy dolls to life, so he can ship them around the country and seemingly cause chaos and kill people. Jennifer Tilly hands off the first Chucky doll to Lexi's sister, as the town goes into the movie theater to watch the movie. Here we're given the big climax where we see Chucky rack up the highest body count we've ever seen at one time. This scene doesn't make the most sense as he's stabbing people in the ass through the seat. <laughs> and instantly killing some of the people and having blood spray from the most random places. One of the people that get killed in the chaos is Lexi's dad. And at this point, almost every single one of our main character's parents have died. While this is going on, Junior and another Chucky doll are behind the movie screen with Lexi, trying to convince her to also become a killer. Panic is breaking my heart. You're going down a path I can't follow. But at the last minute, Junior pulls a Darth Vader, turning on Chucky. No. With Junior and the Chucky doll stabbing each other in the heart, killing them both. We then see Jake trying to be a badass as he goes after the Chucky doll loose in the theater, giving way to some of the cringiest and laughable lines I've ever heard. Watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing some push-ups lately. I don't need that shit. All I need are my bare hands. Jake is finally able to kill Chucky, giving us a scene that looks like it's from Big Trouble in Little China. The episode ends with Andy hijacking the truck full of Chuckies, but he's suddenly ambushed by the Tiffany doll, once again leaving Andy accomplishing absolutely nothing and looking like a major dumbass. We are then given the fate of Nika as we see she was turned into a nugget by Jennifer Tilly, a really sick ending for a character who's been nothing but screwed over this entire series. It also really sucks because it limits one of the best actors on the show. We are then given a closing shot of the kids at the cemetery as a gloved figure grabs a tree. The gloves look like they belong to Kyle as we see her putting them on earlier in the episode, hinting at Kyle still being alive after the explosion. And if you stick around after the credits, you see Chucky in a bathrobe, looking like Ferris Bueller from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's over. Go home. As he does a kill count of everyone who's died within the season. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. That's the end of my review of the first season of the Chucky TV series. Overall being pretty disappointing. Anything that had to do with Chucky was pretty good, but besides from that, our new characters are pretty horrible. I wasn't interested or cared about any of these people. They were very unlikable. Jake was a very bland and cringy protagonist, who should not have been the main character of the series. I never bought the relationship between Lexi and Jake. After all the shit Lexi put him through, that friendship should have never worked. Both Devin and Junior were both kind of bland characters that didn't really add much 
much to the story, and I never felt the relationship between Jake and Devin. In terms of our old characters, Andy is once again outsmarted and does absolutely nothing, and Kyle is brought back to do absolutely nothing and given maybe a fake out death. Like I said earlier, Nika is one of the best actresses in the show, and her character had the most potential going forward. They keep capping what her character is able to do. Jennifer Tilly this entire season has been completely inconsistent and over the top campy, flip flopping back and forth between being with Chucky and being against him. That's going to be the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will not be reviewing the second season as I wasn't too hot on this first season, and I heard really bad things about the second season.